science is about to change your life. I am Stephen Hawking, and I'd like to give you a glimpse of your future. Wow! In this series, five top scientists will investigate game-changing innovations. This is pretty mind-blowing. The shockwaves of progress are heading your way. We'll show you how you'll be safer. Play harder. Connect faster. Live longer. See further. And get smarter. With the technology at our disposal, the possibilities are unlimited. So welcome to the science of the future. The world we live in is a dangerous place, and mankind is a fragile species. As soon as we've dealt with one emergency, another is often upon us. From crime scenes to battlefields and operating rooms, our five scientists investigate breakthrough technologies that are transforming our responses to life-threatening situations. The helicopter, indispensable for combat missions, a workhorse for supplying the front line. But with hostile terrain, bad weather, and enemy fire, their pilots are in constant danger. Tragic accidents are all too common. Finding ways to save crew lives is a high priority. In New York State, Chris Elia Smith has access to an exceptional pioneering system that could make helicopters far less vulnerable. I'm on my way in a regular chopper to rendezvous with the revolutionary Lockheed Martin and K-Man K-Max. Even the simplest helicopter is very hard to fly. Are you watching these guys? Yeah, so I'm waiting for my engine gauge, so I'll go green. So that's the one that I'm waiting on now. Okay. Feels like a big truck. But what makes them all unique is their maneuverability. <laughs> you need super fast reactions and a feather light touch to keep the aircraft stable. This is super sensitive. Don't hit the trees. You've got throttle for speed, the cyclic for pitch and roll, plus anti torque pedals to stop spin. Building a computer program that can deal with that kind of complexity has been impossible until now. That is the Lockheed Martin K Max helicopter, one of the world's first autonomous helicopters. K Max, one of the world's leading heavy lift choppers, has had a groundbreaking systems upgrade. To eliminate risk, they remove the pilot. The K-Max can fly itself. That's so cool. The technology is so radical, it's not yet approved to fly in US airspace unmanned. So on this occasion, it's flown conventionally by a pilot that was one of the first to see it operate autonomously. Their computer lands better than I do. The man who has regularly put his life in the hands of a helicopter with a mind of its own is test pilot Jerry McCauley. So you're a pilot, which I presume that means you like being in control. Pretty much by definition, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you're sitting in here, I mean, what does that feel like? Uh, the first few times are pretty scary. Uh, you know, you're, you're sitting there, you're on the ground when it usually first occurs, and uh, the aircraft lifts itself up, does a little bit of a roll. Sometimes on takeoff, we see the stick kind of go to the left. And it'll go and it'll do it until it rolls out and it'll come back. So it's almost like a ghost is flying the aircraft. From the outside, an autonomous K-Max doesn't give away any of its secrets. Even on the inside, the cockpit appears standard, except for a couple of extra buttons to activate the computerized automation. The most important one being the uh, no-low switch, no local operate. That allows the aircraft to think for its own and fly on its own. When the operating system, known as Optimus Mission Management, takes over, gyros and accelerometers automatically read airspeed, altitude, pitch, roll, and yaw. We've also developed different ways to, to more visually uh, look out there. Lasers, radars, uh, visual systems, like uh, just, you know, essentially cameras. Right, so all the sensors we have, and then some. The central computer then sends commands to actuators that control, among other things, its counter-rotating rotors. 
The brains of the aircraft are kind of in uh, two parts. The actuators that move all the controls live down here on the rods that are already existing for me to fly the aircraft. And then the computers, all the, the systems are installed in the back there. So in designing these brains, I mean, what was the main thing that they did that allowed it to be successful? Being able to do things fast enough to have the aircraft react and land safely or take off safely. More than 50 hours of in-flight training are required to become a qualified chopper pilot. How long will it take a beginner like Chris to master the KMAX and program its computer to perform a series of complex maneuvers on its own? Now it's time to show how the system would work with a multi-million dollar KMAX. I'm driven out to a test site six miles away from the helicopter. So here we are. There's your GCS. Exactly the same as it was in the simulation, I guess. And we've got uh, right flight plan ready to go. So what do I do to summon the helicopter? Just we gotta just hit the uh, depart button. Press the depart button, just like that. So in the field, a command signal is beamed to a military satellite, bounced down to the KMAX's electronic brain and its massive turbine engines spring into life. Today, because we are in US airspace, Pilot Jerry is in control for this demonstration. So the flight plan is telling us that the helicopter is gonna come and pick up this load sitting right in front of us, and then circle around, come and drop it back here. Yes. That is awesome. That, there it is. Within minutes, the K-Max approaches the pickup point. Come up quick. So it's lining itself up. It's going to land, and then we're going to hook up the load to it and continue on the mission. The chopper lands right next to its cargo. All right, and uh, just like in the simulator, pull down and hit the oh, auto takeoff. The auto takeoff. Thermals and crosswinds near the ground make lifting off with a heavy load very challenging. There you go. All right, so just hit the depart button. Go ahead and hit the depart button. The final assignment circle the airfield and deliver the load to a specific drop zone. Here, Jerry completes the mission with incredible accuracy to within feet of the target. Not only is a KMAX keeping pilots out of danger, it can also save lives on the ground by delivering medicines to remote locations. I can also imagine helicopters with these guided systems, gathering intelligence, monitoring the atmosphere or working like delivery vans, but ones which never get stuck in traffic. When are we going to be ready to see these massive helicopters flying over our towns and cities with no pilot inside? And in all honesty, I don't know how I feel about that. But if it's going to massively reduce the number of helicopter accidents, maybe I can get used to it. Remote technology is removing humans from many dangerous situations. And it doesn't get more dangerous than disarming improvised explosives. Expertise and extreme dexterity are required. Can we use technology to give real-time reactions and a delicate touch to a robot?